62 years ago, in 1958, a young couple arrived here at the Anchor River on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. Norman Lowell, his wife Libby, and their infant daughter Lori came to this place and staked out a homestead claim on the top of a bluff only half a mile from where I'm standing. One issue with the location they chose was that at the time, no road ran across the Anchor River here. And so they would have to park as close as they could get on the road and pack everything they needed across a fallen cottonwood log, just like this one. Norman once drew a humorous sketch of that scene as he thought back on the times where he had to carry everything that they needed from building supplies to groceries to mattresses to a cook stove across the fallen log through the brush up a bluff to their cabin. Norman also returned to this scene many years later after he had almost gone blind. In one of his final painting years, he depicted this scene, how special it was to him, the fallen log crossing the river and the bluffs behind, the gateway to his Alaskan dream. I'd like to take you on a tour of the legacy that lives on, on top of that bluff, the homestead properties of the Lowell family. An old homestead cabin, worn and sunken. There are old rusty pieces of equipment. There's a log home, and there's a 10,000 square foot gallery. These are the remnants, the legacy of an Alaskan life, a pioneering adventure that began here on a fallen cottonwood log. In 2016, Norman Lowell dedicated this entire property to the good of the future by creating a nonprofit foundation to own the gallery and his homestead properties. There are over 300 paintings housed inside the Norman Lowell Gallery, along with numerous artifacts representing Alaska's history. Inside the gallery, I hope to convey to you four themes that work their way through the entire collection. Themes that convey the importance of this collection, its place in Alaskan culture, and the way that this story represents something that is very special to all of us who live in this land. Welcome to the Norman Lowell Gallery. There is an excitement here and a wonder that does not fade. You can feel as you observe these paintings the same excitement and awe that the artist felt when he first came to Alaska. When Norman Lowell first arrived here, he was looking for a land that would spark his imagination. And when you look at the oil knife works of the 60s and 70s, and you see these broad strokes that convey not detail, but the light, 
spilling over the ridges and into the valleys. Or when you look at the Denali collection that he rendered in oil pastel and you feel the thrill of the ridge after ridge climbing higher and higher and the clouds that wrap around the ridges, you start to sense he found it. So as you observe these paintings, feel the same awe and wonder that he felt sitting out there in the wilderness. Every new ridge is observing a new land, a new world for the first time. Alaska, endearing and fulfilling land, rugged gentle, calling me to capture her. I wander through the mountains and the glens with paints and pack upon my back, fill my eyes and feast my soul and paint my way across the land. The echo in the valley resounds, who is being captured? Captured? In Alaska, I have found the chiseled, thrusting strength of mountains with the fragile flora at their feet, a face of earth with ages of cold pressed between towering walls of stone, winds that chill you quickly to the bone and make you wonder, can this cold and piercing feeling e'er be told? I do not see this land without the touch of warmth and refinement. Skies and water can be set ablaze with gold and amber, while the slopes above brighten into russets and even scarlet hues. And there is the softness and fineness of the snow and clouds that's hard to capture. Alaska, a land of ruggedness and strong, coarse as though sculptured in relief, the remainder like the broken line left for man to see and shape. Ambling along the Chugash mountain ridges inspires me. Each ridge beckons me to see the other side. Each new valley each new stream, each glistening glacier is calling me on. Rest in yonder green valley, that is for tomorrow. He tells stories Stories of how in the early days he would have to drag everything that he needed for the homestead across a cottonwood log and then up a bluff to reach their homestead cabin. He would tell stories about hunting in the mountains, of raising children on the edge of the wilderness. He would tell these stories of Alaskan life. And these stories are reflected in his paintings. In this, through the fires of pain, we see a fiery parable about the trials of life. And this stands in stark contrast to the beauty of much of the collection that celebrates the grandeur of Alaskan life. There's a small log cabin, just a moss-covered cabin, and it's found woven throughout the works here, oftentimes underneath dramatic mountain landscapes or at the edge of a small meadow, under the stars at night in Alaska. There are times where the aurora borealis appears overhead and the glow lights up the snow and, and you can feel the dancing curtains of light above you as these lights fill the sky. And so the centerpiece 
of the entire collection is this, the 14 foot wide by seven foot tall, Spirit of the North. I want the path to be well-worn to my door, the varnish nearly gone from my cabin floor, my hands to be rough from the work of the day, my heart humbled till there is little to say, my face weathered from the wind and the cold, a glint in my eyes of a story untold, my feet very tired from walking the trail, my arms under stress from the logging detail, Hurried summer days press all hands to labor, gather moose and spuds, blueberries into store, stow the winter's grub beneath the cabin floor, have plenty for all who come to our door. So the work of my hands and the sweat of my brow will have its reward in the warmth that I know and the smile that I see on some visitor's face as he leaves through the door down the trail from our place. This painting is small and inconspicuous here in our sales collection. And it wasn't until I observed it carefully for a while that I began to see the meaning behind it. This is a scene from the town of Gustavus in southeastern Alaska, a small town that was once a rising and bustling farming community. When Norman Lowell visited in 1970, that farming lifestyle was in decline. Throughout his work, you see Norman conveying the beauty of simple marks of a past life. Whether it's an old farm trail running through a forest that is certainly now forgotten, a boat washed up on the shore, or whether it's old cabins that used to be mining homes there is a certain rugged spirit of a pioneering life that Norman romanticizes in his work. And it is but a memory now. And even though we observe these paintings and we see that there's a part of Alaska that can no longer be experienced, something fading, something gone, we can be filled with appreciation and gratitude for that amazing life that once was, that came before us, that lives on in the work of an artist. When the heart greets past places, fondly gathers and retraces footsteps of a younger year, bringing back your youth so clear, that is when your life embraces forgotten memories and places. That is when your soul relives every moment that life gives, recalling times of gentleness, reclaiming times of happiness, 
hoping that the silver cord will hold the heart enraptured longer in the fold. In 2013, following a lengthy battle with glaucoma, Norman Lowell was declared legally blind. He responded to this diagnosis by building a large light array around his easel so that he could see to continue painting, which he did for a number of years. He ultimately completed over 100 works following that diagnosis. 2017 was his final painting year, as his vision by now had been reduced to less than several percent in one eye. We have here in our sales room a collection of over half of his 2017 works. These paintings due to the fact that he was nearly blind, are some of the most amazing works that we have. In the 2017 collection, one sees evening themes prevailing, the glow of a sunset, the recognition of a conclusion. But it is not in a sunset scene that the final farewell to Norman's career is captured. It is a moonlit scene. There is a story that was profoundly important to Norman throughout his entire life. And you can see it reflected in tributes spanning his entire collection. It is the story of the Bristol Bay sailboat salmon fishermen and the rugged lifestyle that they lived from the mid 1800s until the mid 1900s. In some of the final strokes of painting that Norman Lowell would ever put on the canvas. He returned to that story, and in it, he found a fitting parable for the conclusion of his work and for the way that in every path that we walk, there comes an ending. I arrived in Alaska in the late 50s, just at the time when Alaskans were winding down one of the greatest and most colorful eras in salmon fishing history. From 1884 until 1951, hardy fishermen from around the world came to join a fleet of boats without motors, outfitted only with oars and single sail. It was rugged fishing, but for over 60 years they had their bountiful Bristol Bay salmon fishing for themselves. No boats with motors were allowed. Sadly, in 1951, these fishermen saw their livelihood and way of life taken away. The rules changed. Motors were allowed, and boats with motors flocked in. 
It was evening on the last day of the 1950 season, and only a few sailboats were out finishing their catch for the day. And then one old veteran of the Bristol Sea rose to his feet and yelled to his friends, Hey out there, you know this is our last voyage home. It's the end of our era. As a sharp wind from the north stung his weathered face, etched by his many years at sea, he rigged his sail to catch the wind and yelled once more, I'm headed home. My painting Voyage Home is an expressionistic work dedicated to the hard-working, most rugged fishermen in salmon fishing history. It took place in Bristol Bay, Alaska, 1884 to 1951, the most colorful period of sailboat salmon fishing in the world. The mighty contrary winds drive me against my will and ominous perils swell from the deep. Towering, shifting walls of ice challenge my course. The pale light of the distant moon dimly lights my passageway. Hope against hope, prayer after prayer leads me on. The spirit of life leads me through the darkness of the night on this last journey home. As hope falters and doubts creep in, I see a small glimmer of light above the cape ahead. There on the rocky point, a beacon of light. It's my home port. Thank God. He has led me safely on my last voyage home. Thank you for watching. For more information, you can go to our website at normanlowellgallery.org or follow us on Facebook at Norman Lowell Gallery. If you're interested in supporting our nonprofit foundation, which operates this gallery and the homestead properties, you can find our donations page on mightycause.com or you can send us a direct donation through our postal address. We've also put together a special for 2020 with a selection of prints at special discounts for this year. And you can find that at normanlowellgallery.org 2020. There is so much more to see and to show. In a few days, I'll be releasing a second video, which will cover more about that special that we're running for this year. And it will also cover some of Norman's techniques, his styles, the many mediums that he used to bring his collection to life on the canvas. So I hope to see you again soon, and thank you again for watching.